Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss a very important uh, sorting algorithm, which is quicksort. Mm -hmm. Quicksort is one of the most used algorithms because of its fantastic runtime properties and uh, uh, its uh, space complexity is also very good, which is O1, that is, it does not require extra memory to sort the uh, sequence. And uh, one of the problems of quicksort is that it is unstable. In case where you need stability of uh, algorithm, then you should probably consider moist sort to sort it. So as you can see, this is the main driver program. And one of the things which you will notice in this case is that uh, I typically use size t for passing the array bounds because that's the correct thing to do because number of elements of an array can be as large as, large as size underscore t but in this case it is integer the reason will come uh, will become clear very soon so quick sort is a recursive algorithm in general you can do iterative version because by implementing the stack so the main routine is not this most important routine is partition. So when you partition an array, you supply the lower bound and higher bound of the array, and then it returns a partition index, and then you subdivide the array into two sides, one from low to pi minus one, and another from pi plus one to five. So uh, the main sorting thing happens at partition. So what partition does is, for example, uh, let's go to main. So in, from the given elements in the array, you pick a pivot, okay? And the pivot could be first element, it can be middle element, it can be last element, or it can be a random element. So for example, uh, uh, in the given uh, code, I have taken the highest uh, index as the pivot. Now, once you pick a pivot, what Pixot does is that it iterates through rest of the elements, that is 164 and 384 and so on, and whichever value is less than pivot will be brought to the left hand side. Okay, so for example, 339 is there, so 164 and 211 will be on one side. Okay, and then pivot will become the third element, all right? And all the remaining elements will be on the right hand side because that's what uh, you see uh, this guy does, okay? So 164 and 211 will be on one side and 339 will become the partition index, the PI variable and rest of the elements on the right hand side. Once that happens, you take the left hand side of the array and you take the right hand side of the array and you sort it again. So that's how it works out. So let's see this in action, or rather let's study the code here a bit. So how do we do this uh, partitioning? So we pick the pivot. It is, high is taken for simplicity. If you take low, that is also simple. Middle requires a bit of calculation and random is, well, you will have to call a random routine from the standard library. So pivot is our high and i we take as low minus one. You can take i as low as well, but if you make i low, then this i plus plus should happen after swap, not before swap. Okay, because you want to ensure that the zeroth element is taken care of. Since here i plus plus happens before uh, the swap, that's why it is low minus one in order to take care of the zeroth element. Once you have picked the pivot and you have i. Uh, you can uh, iterate from uh, low to high minus one and if the element is less than pivot you swap it okay and that's it that's the main uh, pivot routine that's what we have discussed any value less than pivot will be on the left hand side that's what we do here once this routine is done once this portion is done you take the pivot and you bring it to the i plus one location okay that's it and finally, retain the partition index that is the position of 
the pivot because now a i a i is at i plus one so return the pivot's new position that's it and then you do on the left side of the array and right side of the array that's it so let's see this in action that how it works out now quick sort has uh, we'll discuss the algorithm uh, complexity a bit later so let's compile this and then we run this now our array is sorted here you can see these uh, statements these values and try to understand that how the exchanges have happened so for example uh, if you take a smaller array to understand for example this guy so this is how it works out so you can trace it yourself uh, because uh, it's easy to do now one of the properties of quick sort is that if the array is reverse sorted it sorts it faster as compared to when the array is already sorted for example if i make this one two three four so you see it will take more steps so one two three four and five and five steps it has sorted but in case of a sorted array it has taken four plus three plus two that is nine steps so if the array is in reverse order or relatively unsorted then it will sort it faster so let's go through the complexity analysis now i don't do complexity analysis myself and the general uh, bigger notation if you consider then the best case of uh, quick sort is n log n and then the worst case is uh, n square and the average case would be n log n as well so dinal nuts has discussed this quick sort algorithm in great detail here which you can read in the volume 3 and uh, see the complexity calculation here so this is all the complexity calculation of quick sort so i will request you to go through this to understand the quick sort in a better way so with this we come to the end of sort uh, algorithm and in the next video we will discuss my sort uh, by the way i would like to tell the name of inventor his name is c a r o uh, i really don't know how to pronounce the last name Hore or Ho. so this guy invented uh, quicksort okay so with this we come to the end and i hope you have enjoyed this video i will see you in the next video on my sort uh, please subscribe to the channel and like the video so that it can reach uh, many other people like yourself and more students can benefit from this. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy.